What's up, Navigation Traders? Today is Friday, July 20th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. We had, a, we had a decent number of alerts, quite a few more alerts this week than we've had in the, in the recent weeks. Uh, part of that is due to, it was expiration week, we had to make some rolls, and, but we also had a significant number of closing and opening trades, which is, which is good as well. Anytime we're closing trades, that typically means we're booking winners. So let's jump into the alerts for the week. Starting off with one of those closing trades, which was a straddle in Microsoft, a pre-earnings long straddle. So as you know from our course, in anticipation of expansion of implied volatility, uh, so we put this on looking for a price move and that expansion, at least got the move and booked a, booked a quick profit of 20% in just six days. And so if we take a look at the chart of Microsoft, just to kind of give you an idea, of, uh, of what happened there, MSFT, oops, MSFT. Uh, we put that on right here and just got a quick move up, boom, boom. Uh, and we're out of that on, on this day here. And so, you know, we didn't get much of an expansion in implied volatility like we did the next day. However, the price move was enough for us to get that 20% profit and be out of the trade. Obviously, you can see what happened after the fact. You get the implied volatility crush after the inert earnings announcement, which was uh, after the market yesterday. And uh, even though it was a big move with that implied volatility crush, it's really tough to make money buying options. So we always want to be out of those trades before the earnings announcement. So good trade there. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in IWM. So we rolled one of our short call verticals uh, from July to August. And so let's take a look at IWM. Uh, everything is out of July and we are into August and September. So we've got two sets of short call verticals that were previously from Iron Condors. Holding onto these, extending duration to keep that short delta in our portfolio. You can see prices right here. And this is both sets, you know, so this is two sets down here. We keep them separated by just one strike just for tracking purposes, so we keep them separate. However, you can kind of look at this as one trade. I and mean, we've got price right here. We're just looking for some downside to benefit that. And we'll continue to keep that on for that short delta uh, until we get a, a, a significant down move. Next trade was a uh, rolling adjusting trade in the queues. So very similar thing, just, ra just rolling the short call verticals from July to August. And uh, we have three sets of short call verticals in QQQ, which again were from previous iron condors. Here's one of them. Uh, again, same thing, price right here, just looking for some downside to benefit that. Uh, another one with three contracts is right here. And this one has moved significantly against us. So we will uh, we'll be you know, probably rolling this one early to take away some of that negative theta decay uh, that you get when it's, when it's that far out of your range. You can see in August, we've still got 28 days. But next week, we may even roll that one out to September to just get some positive theta decay working for us on that piece of the trade. And then we've got the other one with four contracts right here, which you can see that's still within our range. Just did that one, so just looking for some downside to benefit that. Again, just to repeat myself, I know I say this probably every week, but the reason we keep this short bias, these short directional positions, in our portfolio is because the downside velocity of a move is much greater than an up move. And so when we're selling these range bound positions like iron condors, strangles, butterflies, calendars, all these different range bound type core positions that we trade, you've got to keep short delta in your portfolio to help hedge against that, that downside move that can come very, very quickly. And so it's, it's done well for us. You know, we've, we've got some of these short positions that are, uh, that are down, but guess what? We've been booking winners all over the place, uh, which, which makes up for it. So, you know, our P&L continues to grow overall, uh, even though we have some losing positions that are long biased, or excuse me, short biased, uh, but that's the name of the game, and that's how you have to play it if you're doing the, the type of strategies that we teach. So hopefully I haven't beaten that dead horse too much, even though I mention it every week. Uh, that's right. It's always good to hear things more than once, right? Uh, next trade was an opening trade in Adobe. So we did a long call in Adobe. Part of the reason was because 
uh, it was a bullish directional trade, and we needed to add some, some bullishness into our portfolio because we were getting a little bit too short. Uh, in this case, which I don't do very often, but they're liquid enough, we used the weekly options with 18 days because we were really looking to be in this trade for only a short period of time. So I didn't want to go all the way out to August with, with you know 30 plus days. I wanted to keep it more short, uh, get, pay less for the options, and, and give, us, give ourselves a chance to, uh, to book, a, book a quick winner. So what happened in Adobe, if we go to the chart, we already closed out of this. So um, we, we got that up move that we were looking for. In fact, let me, let me just go to the, let me go to the alert because uh, it just happened a couple days later. Uh, if I can scroll up here and find it, it was right here. Okay, so on so just two days later on the 18th, uh, we booked this one, booked over a, booked a profit of over 40 percent in just two days. and uh, and so that's that's where we're at. So that was that was a good quick winner. Uh, so uh, in on the 16th, out on the 18th. So the 16th was right here. Moved against us a little bit the next day. Actually, some of our members I heard got in down here, which is awesome. And then it ripped higher, and we got out on the 18th, booked a nice profit of 40% in just those two days. So nice trade there. And that wasn't really a that wasn't really a pre-earnings. That was more to help balance out our portfolio. And the fact that implied volatility is so low, and earnings are coming in the next month. Uh, so we expected to potentially get a, uh, some help from an increase in implied volatility, which we didn't really, but we got the move we were looking for, so booked that nice winner. All right, back to the order. Uh, let's see, we were right here. So next trade was a closing adjusting trade in FXI. So we had both a July and a, an August uh, FXI butterfly on. Closed out our uh, July one, took a loss on that piece of the trade. And then we're still holding our August, which is which is doing nicely. Pretty centered, got a nice profit there. Looking for a little bit more and to potentially add another one because uh, we're down after the July closing. We're down on the trade overall, uh, but would like to get uh, get some more profit back in this piece before I before I exit that one. So we'll continue to watch that. Maybe add to uh, if implied volatility stays high, or just close it out when we when we get to a point of of uh, thinking it makes sense. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So we had a long put vertical that we initially put on for some short delta a few months ago in Apple. We've, we've rolled that a couple times, uh, and that's what we did here. Rolled from July to August and kept the same strikes. We're able to roll for a credit, which is always preferable. Uh, and so we're just extending duration here. So if we take a look at that Apple trade, uh, you can see it's still, let me get rid of these theoretical ones. Uh, you can see it's it's you know just just outside of our range, so looking for some downside to benefit that piece. Next trade was a closing trade in EWZ, so we closed out a short strangle, uh, took a small loss on that piece of the trade, but we had with with different rolls and adjustments that we'd been making with that, uh, we we're able to book a really nice winner, and uh, and so we were out of that at that point. Uh, there's another opening trade where we re-entered in EWZ here. So, uh, but before I do that, let's just go to the closing trades. Remember, you can find all the closing trades here. So if you look at EWZ, you can see we had several rolls and adjustments and things. Ended up booking a nice winner of, of $225. Uh, that's just that's just the power of, of this strategy, staying mechanical. If a trade goes against you, just extend duration, continue to collect credits, and you'll end up booking a winner most of the time. So that's just a good example of, again, staying mechanical. Uh, let's see, going back to our order. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around today, but just uh, uh, there it is, closing. Okay, next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in forward slash ES. So this was a long put vertical that we also had on for some short bias in our portfolio. Rolled that from July to August, adjusted the strikes as necessary. And uh, you know, at that point, our, our short delta to theta ratio is about two and a half to one, which is great. We like to be anywhere from one to one to five to one with our short delta versus our theta ratio. And so getting, our, getting ourselves back to about two and a half to one was a good, good position there. So if we go to ES, uh, we've got three different pieces on here. 
uh, with two separate trades. So let's start with the long put vertical. And actually, we'll just stay with that for now. So here's that that we rolled to August. You can see price is still in our range, just looking for some downside to benefit that piece. I'll come back to the iron condor piece because we did have an alert regarding that this week. Uh, next trade was an opening trade in LMT. So this was a pre-earnings long call in LMT, looking for at least 20% of profit. And this was we found this one through the option strategy back tester. We did a webinar with uh, Ophir Gottlieb from CML last week talking about uh, how we use the option strategy back tester. And this was one that I, I frankly just straight out found straight from the back tester. And uh, this was a long call leading up to earnings. Plus the, the chart was looking nice for a long position. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. And, and this isn't something that I... You know, there's nothing magic about this, but it just keep, helps keep me on the right side of the market. And that is, you know, a lot of times when the when price comes up above the moving average and it just kind of consolidates or or comes down a bit for a day or two, I like to look at that as a good entry point. And so that's what we did here. Not only was it leading up to earnings where we were hoping for an implied volatility expansion, which we didn't really get, but but even this just this little move up higher. That gave us the opportunity to book a really nice winner in LMT, which we ended up getting out of today. It was the last trade we made today, this morning, and uh, booked over 35% in just a few days, okay? And that's just with that tiny little move, you know, just from getting in right here and just that tiny move right there. So nice trade in LMT. I was actually hoping for a quick move up to 325, which would have given us a significant profit. Uh, but still booked 35% in just a few days. You can't you can't uh, be mad at that. Um, you know the the reason I got out. You know they they announce on Tuesday morning, so we'd have to be out Monday anyway. Uh, I don't like to hold these long theta positions. Oh, excuse me, these long uh, these these positions that have a theta decay. These negative theta positions. I don't like to hold them for that long. So the quicker we can be out, the better. I didn't want to hold all the way over to the weekend in case. You know, implied volatility continued to decrease and, and price didn't uh, keep moving our way. So we went ahead and booked that and made 35%. So nice trade there. Going back to our order here. Uh, that was the opening trade in LMT. Next trade was another closing trade in IYR, the real estate ETF. So we had an iron con over there, booked over 45% of max profit. Uh, got a nice contraction in implied volatility. Uh, if you would look at IYR right now, you can see the applied volatility has contracted significantly down to the 28 percentile, 15 percent rank. So just that steady decline of implied volatility and decent steady uh, price move movement gave us a chance to book that nice winner. Next trade was an opening trade in forward slash GC. So this is a uh, forward slash GC is the gold future. So I was looking at, we, we've got a spike up in implied volatility over that 50 level. Uh, in fact, it, it, it climbed even higher after I put this trade on up into the 70 plus range. But uh, I decided to put this on in the futures as opposed to the ETF, which is GLD. However, I did state as an alternate trade, you can do a short strangle or iron condor in GC or GLD. Uh, we just chose GC because of the efficient use of capital that you get with the futures. And so if we take a look at that, and I, I don't trade the futures in gold that much. It is a big contract. So for smaller accounts, you may have opted for GLD. But you can see here with one contract, we've got a max profit potential of $1,040. So a lot of profit potential for just one contract, and it took us less than $2,000 of capital initial capital to put this on. So that's why we chose GC in this case. So it's still very centered, uh, not much to do there except for weight. And then a closing adjusting trade in forward slash CL. This is the uh, short strangle we had in CL. Booked a nice profit, over 40% of max on this piece of the trade, but we're still holding our other adjusted strangle. If we take a look at that here, uh, and prices come back down. We've got a nice profit in this piece since we've rolled it. Uh, but just holding it for some more. If price moves higher or starts to test one of our break-evens, or even, maybe even sooner, uh, we'll probably add another piece to this because the implied volatility in oil is still very nice. So we'd love to get another piece on to this trade. 
uh, still at the 58 in the percentile, has contracted significantly this week, uh, but still good enough to add on another piece if needed. But uh, we'll just continue to hold for now. On, on that piece, there is still 27 days to expiration. So if we added another piece, it would be out in the next expiration cycle in October. Wow, I can't believe we're already starting to look at October positions uh, with 59 days to expiration. So we'll just see what happens next week. If, if price uh, comes back down and we continue to get that implied volatility, con implied volatility contraction, we may just take this off and book a really nice winner. Uh, if not, we'll continue to manage as needed. Next trade was a closing trade in Adobe. I already mentioned that. That's where we booked a nice profit of 40% in just two days. Uh, next was an opening adjusting trade in ES. Okay, so this is the iron condor piece of the ES. So what happened was, let's take a look here. Scooch this up a little so you can see a little bit better. So. We've got, so let's click off the long put vertical because that's a totally separate trade. Let me reset this so I can check the correct boxes. Uh, so let's check off of that. And then we've got two different iron condors on here. Uh, this is the, let's, so let's check off this one here. So this is the other, the old iron condor that we have that's, that's in August. You see price has just been hanging out on the upper end of the range, needs some downside before we can book a profit there. But what I ended up doing is because implied, we got that little bit of a down move uh, on, I think it was Wednesday when we put this trade on. Uh, we got a spike up in implied volatility. So I just added another iron condor. So if we take a look here and just check on the boxes for that new iron condor, you can see here, it's very centered, got a tiny bit of profit, not enough to do anything with yet. Uh, so now we just got those two iron condors on uh, in ES, one in August and one in September. And I know it kind of gets a little bit confusing when you have these multiple multiple trades on in one symbol, uh, but that's why I like to vary the number of contracts. And then obviously, you're, if you're in different cycles, it's easy to you know decipher which is which. So uh, that's what we're doing in ES. Next trade, opening trade in EWZ. So we had booked uh, a profit, got out of EWZ earlier in the week. Implied volatility spiked back up to the 83 level, so we re-entered. Uh, and in this case, as I stated here, we entered in the September cycle, which at the time had 64 days to expiration. Now, as you know from my courses, I typically like to stay in that 30 to 60 days to expiration. But sometimes you get into a situation of no man's land where August only had 29 and, uh, and September had 64. So neither of those fall between 30 and 60, right? Uh, I always, in that case, I typically like to opt for the longer duration. And so that's what we did here. Instead of doing August with 29, we opted to collect more credit, get wider, uh, a little bit more time. The trade-off is this. If you're in August with 29 days to expiration, uh, the, the theta is going to decay quicker. Okay, so you're going to see profits come quicker if you get a, a, a decline or a contraction in applied volatility. The trade-off is you don't collect enough credit, you don't collect as much credit up front, and you have higher gamma risk exposure, meaning the risk as you get closer and closer to expiration gets greater and greater. That slope of your profit curve gets greater and greater. Uh, the slope of it, meaning the, the smaller the price move, the more, uh, you know, the more risk you have, the quicker you can you know, get out of profit or into profit. And so it's, it just moves much more wild. And that's why when we get down to 21 days to expiration, we like to roll to the next cycle anyway. And so if I entered with 29 days, within eight days, I'd be having to roll out to September anyway, which is gonna cost me more in transaction costs. And so it just made more sense to go to that 64 days to expiration. Hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, so if we look at EWZ, you can see we put this on yesterday, and today EWZ is up over 4%. So still well within our range, but we're already down slightly on that from the P&L, you see, uh, but still well within our range. So if we take a look at the implied volatility, still nice and high at the 74. So if, you know, if price starts uh, moving, moving over towards our upper end, I'm going to go ahead and add another piece to that, collect some more credit, and just keep that, keep our uh, break-evens wider. Uh, so we'll see what happens in EWZ. 
Next trade was an opening trade in JNJ. &J. So this is one where we put on a, sh a new short put vertical in JNJ. &J. Now in this case, I entered in August with 29 days. And here's the reason. This is more of a directional play, and I hope to be out of this sooner, as opposed to the other one, which was more of a delta neutral, an income type trade, which we could potentially be in longer and roll if we needed to, and that kind of stuff. So with J&J, &J, uh, we're looking for a price move higher. Uh, and, and the reason we did this was because our overall portfolio was starting to get a bit too short. So we added this bullish trade in to help balance that, got us back to about that three to one ratio. Didn't want to be much over that at this point. Uh, so if we take a look at J&J, &J, you'll see here, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a directional play. So looking for some up move to benefit that piece. And it gave us a little bit more balance to our portfolio. So if you'll notice that what, what I do a lot of times when I'm trying to balance the portfolio, I'm using individual stocks for those directional trades, whereas we typically like to use ETFs and futures for our core delta neutral income, uh, you know, premium selling type strategies. So hopefully that makes sense because that, that's kind of a little nuance of, of what we try to do. Use directional trades to help balance out the portfolio. Uh, enter our core positions as delta neutral premium selling in high implied volatility type situations. And then the last trade was LMT, which I already mentioned, booked that nice winner in just 35, uh, in just a few days, 35%. And that's all the alerts. So let's take a look at uh, some of our other positions. I mentioned oil, mentioned ES, mentioned gold, corn. So we've still got a couple pieces in corn. We've got a short put vertical, which we're waiting for a move up to benefit that piece. However, we are starting to get close to expiration seven days, so early next week we'll be out of that position regardless of where it is. We'll just close that out. Uh, and then the other piece is we have another full iron condor, which if we take a look at that, you'll see we could use a little bit more up movement to benefit that piece as well. So if we get an up movement in corn, we'll probably book both of these and be out of it uh, next week. If not, we'll just continue to manage as needed. But this one, the iron condor is in September, so we got plenty of time there. Uh, to, uh, to manage that. Wheat. We've got a, an iron condor on here. We've had a decent move up in wheat. Uh, and, and unfortunately, I had a, a short put vertical on right here that I took off uh, because it was running out of time and uh, you know, uh, it was way, way against us. And so I just went ahead and closed it out. Unfortunately, price reversed and uh, we would have done pretty well on that had we kept it. However, we still got an iron condor on here and making some money, not enough to take off yet, but we'll just continue to watch and manage that as needed. I mentioned Apple, DIA, we've got some short call verticals. One you can see is, is out of our range here, and then the other one is, uh, is in our range, so just looking for some downside to benefit those. Those were both originally part of Iron Condor, so we've just continued to keep those on for that short delta bias. Uh, EWW, did I mention this one? No, I didn't. Um, so we've got two pieces on here. Uh, we've got this short strangle, which we've got some profit in. Could use a little bit of upside, a little bit more theta decay before we book that one. And then we've got this other adjusted strangle, uh, which you can see prices out of our range. Uh, so we're just holding this one. Now remember, after you adjust this, and we adjusted this up to a 48 straddle, so we have a short 48 call, short 48 puts, uh, but we're in August, still have 28 days, so plenty of time here, uh, but we need a little bit of a downside movement to benefit this. But remember, once it, it, if it moves outside the break even after we adjust, we don't automatically adjust again. What we really need to do is take a look at that untested side. So if we just check on the puts, uh, you can see we've got some profit on the puts, but definitely more room to go, right? We've got more profit that we can make. So if it was up here and we had very little profit left to make, we would be rolling these puts up, but we're fine here. So we're just playing the waiting game. And if we get a down move, you know, we'll come back down to range and then we'll potentially roll that once we get down to, um, down to the point where we are uh, closer to expiration. When we get to about 21 days to expiration, we may roll that, but we'll just see what happens. Nothing to do there at this point. I mentioned EWZ, I mentioned FXI, I mentioned IWM, I mentioned J&J, I mentioned the Qs. XLK, we've got this long put vertical, which has gone against us, but we're in August, so hoping for some more downside before we roll that. But if we get, as we get closer to expiration, 
we don't like these negative theta decay pieces, so we, we may look to roll that to get more back into a positive theta decay and just extend duration on that. But we'll deal with that uh, depending on what price does next week. And then XLU, we've got a short strangle here. This is one we put on as a pretty tight strangle, almost a straddle. Got some profit here, but not quite enough to take off yet. If we take a look, implied volatility is still decent at the 56 percentile. Uh, so just continuing to manage that one as needed. So that's all the alerts. That's all the trades. That's all the positions that we have on. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Look for some more good trading next week. Everybody have a good one. Talk to you soon.